Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at Newton's first law, so let's get started. Now it helps to remember Newton's first law, and this is it in a box here. So it says Newton's first law states that an object will remain at rest or move at a constant speed in a straight line unless acted on by an unbalanced force. In other words, if forces are balanced, an object stays at rest or moves at constant speed. So this leads on from the previous theory video on balanced and unbalanced forces, and it's our first rule for understanding the motion of objects. And I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you understand this. So here we have a ball and its velocity shown, and we can apply forces to the right or left hand side of the ball. So let's say we increase the force acting to the right in the ball to 1 newton then this means it's going to be unbalanced forces so it's going to move to the right. And remember for Newton's first law we're saying that if the forces are balanced on the object then it's going to travel at a constant speed or it's going to stay at rest. So right now we could say that the forces acting on the ball are balanced so it's going to stay put, it's going to stay where it is. However if we were to apply one Newton to both sides then you would see that we have a roughly constant speed here, 0.3 meters per second. Or we could do the same with two newtons on either side and so on. So here we have a constant speed of 0.8 meters per second because we have balanced forces. Going back to the notes now, we're going to look at an application of Newton's first law in vehicle safety. So we have seat belts here. It says in a car crash, all objects attached to a car would stop with the car. However, by Newton's first law, anything not fixed, for example passengers or objects, would continue to move forward at the original or constant speed. So let's say this motorcyclist was travelling at 70 miles per hour and then they ploughed into these tyres, then because the motorcyclist is not attached to the motorbike, i.e. they don't have a seatbelt on, then when the motorbike hits into the tyres, the motorcyclist is going to continue to move at the speed it was doing before it hit the tyres, i.e. the 70 miles per hour. And it might be the case that this is actually safer for someone on a motorbike to actually be launched from the motorbike in the event of a crash, because it's maybe more likely that they'll survive if they come off the bike rather than getting dragged under the motorbike for example. But this isn't the case in a car where you have seatbelts. So it says that seatbelts can save lives as they apply a force in the opposite direction to the motion to stop the person moving forward and hitting the steering wheel or windscreen. So in the event of a crash, seatbelts provide that balanced force to keep you within the car and to stop you moving forward at the original speed that the car was doing. And in this picture you can see that without a seatbelt your head could go through the windscreen for example, but with a seatbelt and an airbag in this case you're going to remain inside the car which is much safer. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.